Hello everyone, it's Karen at the Cool Tool Studio. I'm here today to share with you all a really simple setting style in this ring project video. So today I'm going to be walking you through how to create these rings and showing you this setting style. I really like the low profile of this setting and it makes them super comfortable to wear, but also I feel like they're kind of minimally stylized enough that they're appropriate for both a men's ring or a woman's ring. Let's start off by taking a look at what you need to create these rings. I have a work surface, a precision hole punch, I'm working with the gray one today, a pair of tweezers, an ultra clay pick, a mini palette knife, a small brush for applying water, and then a larger brush for dusting. I have a tough card, a silicone ring mandrel, and a four millimeter setting burr. I also have a snake maker, and then a four millimeter CZ that's gonna be fired in place. I'm also working with a wonder roller, a wick away, an easy 960 sterling clay. I'm working with sterling clay today because I'm making a ring and I want it to be nice and strong. I'm working with the finishing touches mold, round domed, clay thickness rolling frames, and then sanding pads, stick, and then also 240 sandpaper. So since the stone is set directly into the band here, I'm going to use my CZ to determine how thick my band needs to be. Because um, you want the band to kind of cover the whole depth of stone and not have the point hanging out the back. So kind of like it when you're um, using a precision hole punch to make a setting, um, or whenever you're trying to determine the depth of your setting, you're used to seeing us use this acrylic snake maker and running it over the stone and checking to see if it's dragging around all over the place. Um, for my four millimeter stone here today, I've got a six cards thickness rolling frame and a three, car three cards thickness rolling frame here. So it's gonna be nine cards thick total. And that's how thick I'm gonna make my band. If you're working with a smaller stone or a um, larger stone, um, your band will either be thinner or thicker to accommodate your stone depth. Um, I forgot to mention this earlier because I'm just so used to having it on my bench. You're also gonna need some cool slip today to prep your work surface and your roller so that your clay doesn't stick. So here comes those thickness frames back. And then since I'm rolling a band here, I kind of pre-rolled my clay into a bit of a snake. And then I'm just rolling it into my band here. And then just like before, I'm gonna kind of use my stone as a gauge for how thick do I want my band to be. I know I want a little bit of material on either side there. So I'm gonna set that there and then use my thickness frames again with the grids as a guide here. Line up there, I'm scoot this way some, and that's just giving me kind of a straight line to cut. Knock this off for now. I'm gonna take my excess clay off and put it in a hydrator to keep it nice and moist. And then at this point, when I'm forming my rings, um, I like to take my mandrels and set them upside down and then wrap around. And I'm starting with some overlap here. And then um, you're gonna cut. You could use either a tissue blade, um, that mini palette knife that I showed earlier, clay pick. Um, you're just removing excess material and we're gonna spend some time cleaning up the seam, so I'm not really gonna lose my mind about how it was cut. I'm dampening the clay here, and then spend some time really kind of going back and forth and blending out this seam. Whoops. You can start this process off with a brush, um, but also, you know, you've got a really convenient tool quite literally on hand here. Um, I'm also gonna kind of manipulate this clay back and forth just using my finger. If you booger up this edge, we're gonna be refining that later. The goal is to just kind of back and forth build up a strong connection here. And it might look kind of crude now, but you can always add some more clay back in and sand. Um, 
There's plenty of opportunity to clean this up. When you're happy with your seam, um, you're gonna wanna punch a hole for your setting on the other side. Um, again, I have a four millimeter stone here and I'm working with the gray punch because it is slightly smaller than my stone. Um, you just want the punch to be smaller than your stone so it doesn't fall straight through. Um, opposite side of my seam here, I'm kind of generally shooting for the middle. Again, you can end up adjusting by sanding um, and you're going to punch down straight through your clay there. So now we're ready to take this piece off to dry. Um, I'm using a mug warmer or a candle warmer to speed up my drying process. So we're gonna take this off to dry. So while my ring band is drying, I'm also gonna go ahead and make um, the little elements on the side that's gonna set. Today I'm using a palette knife. Um, I'm just pushing down into and kind of dragging as I go. Um, you can use a clay scraper and do like the whole section but um, today I'm only going to need two. Um, I always make a couple extra, but this is a way that if you're like, oh, I don't feel like, like making 50 right now, I just want to make a couple, you can kind of just press down in and drag and then come with this edge again and clean up that excess clay. And there I've got just a couple to work with for today. So I'm also going to take this off to the heat to speed up the drying. Um, uh, I forgot to mention, I did not apply Cool Slip to this prior to using it. Um, if you're ever drying something in place and gonna be popping it out dry, you don't need to use Cool Slip to get it out. So now we're ready to do some refining and shaping. Um, we're gonna kind of correct the oddities on my scene here and um, just clean this piece up really. Uh, I always like to start off by cleaning up this edge. Um, and to do that, I've got some sandpaper. Um, I'm working with sandpaper instead of a sanding pad because I want a nice um, kind of flat surface without any give to be sanding on. Um, if you're working on something with some give, it's really difficult to make a flat face. So I've got my ring here supported by my mandrel and I'm just moving it in a circular motion. And what that's gonna do is that's going to bring this whole face down at one time and keep it nice and level. So it works pretty quickly because this is a pretty heavy grit. So I'm going to flip it over and do this face now. And that's just a really nice, quick and easy way to make sure your rings are going to sit nice and flat. I don't know if you can tell kind of on this um, inside edge, it hasn't been sanded yet, so I know that it's not yet flat all the way across. So I'm gonna spend a little more time. And that's good to go. So at this point, um, save all of this dust, you can reconstitute it. Um, I'm going to use the sanding stick to continue my shaping. Um, I like to start off by first kind of cleaning up my seam and then uh, this is kind of a style choice on your part whether you like this um, more sharp edge just for comfort's sake and um, just visually too. I like kind of more subtle rounded edges on my rings so I'm going to use the sanding stick to shape that as well. But again we're going to start off with the seam and I'm working a nice long um, strokes here. You don't want to do just lots of little ones because that's going to um, kind of almost create like a faceted sort of surface that you're going to have to work against to clean up again later. So really following the curve of your piece there as you sand, we're going to try to even out and kind of hide where our seam was made. It kind of helps to look at it from different angles. Here I can see, ooh, it's looking a little flat. Um, it's hard to tell when you're looking at it straight on. So I'm gonna come and try to blend that out. Oop, got my nail there. 
So I keep them short. All right. So then again, still using the sanding stick at this point, I'm gonna soften this edge. And to do that, I'm gonna kind of hold my ring at an angle and keep this straight up and down and just very gently move across here. I just like to do most of my shaping with a sanding stick because it's pretty quick. And then I use the sanding pads to clean up all the marks that have been made during the shaping process. So that edge has been softened. We're gonna flip so we can do this edge. So then at this point, I'm gonna kind of dust it so I can take a look at how things are shaping up to be. Um, and then also at this point, before we move on to refining the surface with our sanding pads, I'm gonna take a look at the inside of my seam there. Um, it's pretty visible. So I'm going to, at this point, take some of my dusting from before. I mean, that might be enough, but got plenty. I'm gonna dampen my brush and I'm gonna be making some paste here to help kind of blend that seam. So I added just a bit of water there that I'm kind of mixing in and then I'm using my brush to pick up and work it into that low area there. I'm doing this now because um, once this is dried, I'm going to sand both the inside and the outside of my ring all in one go. I always kind of add a little bit more material than needed um, to make sure you really fill it and then you can sand it flush. I'm gonna dampen one more time just to smooth things out. And we're ready to dry this piece so we can sand it. So now that the additional clay that I added here on the seam has dried, I'm going to refine both the inside and the outside of my ring. I'm starting out with a super fine sanding pad and I'm cleaning up that seam area. I'm just kind of working it back and forth. Um, I'm supporting my piece from the back here since I'm applying downward pressure. I'm not just letting it hang out like this and trying to sand it. Um, you always wanna support your greenware clay while you're sanding it to make sure you reduce the risk of breaking it. Um, once you've kind of cleaned up your seam, I'm also going to take the sanding pad and I'm going to run it along the entire interior on both sides to again soften that edge. Um, and that's just in this case for comfort. I always like kind of having a softer edge on the interior of my rings. And then um, you're going to work your way down and grit to clean up any scratches that you've made in the shaping process. So I just used my super fine. Up next is ultra fine. And I'm going to be again using that gently on these faces here since I know I scratched them up when I was leveling out the surface. And then I'm also going to end up using it on that seam all along the edge. And basically just I'm going to sand almost the entirety of my ring here with both the ultra fine and the micro fine. And then once you've sanded your piece, we're gonna cut a seat for our stone and wrap this project up. So I just wrapped up with my micro fine sanding pad and I'm gonna kind of dust away my excess clay here. Just so you can get a sense that you can't see that seam anymore. And I always like to kind of just highlight this that when I was blending that seam and it was wet clay, it was not pretty for a moment there, but you just have to kind of trust the process and really put in the time and you can clean up just about anything. The inside of my ring is looking good too. So at this point, we're ready to set our stone. 
So I have my four millimeter setting burr and I'm working with a four millimeter burr because that is coordinated to the size of my stone. Um, at this point, I'm gonna pop it back onto the mandrel for support and I'm coming straight down with my burr and twisting. Um, this is very aggressive. Uh, they're designed to cut metal, so they're gonna work very quickly on your metal clay. Um, so you're gonna wanna check it often to see if it's deep enough. So we're gonna remove some material, dust that away, and see how we're fitting. And what we're looking for is we want, um, kind of like with a flush setting, you want the top of your stone to be right at surface there. Um, it's sitting just a little high. Whoop, I'm gonna pop him out. I'm gonna cut a little bit more. helps to kind of bring your piece up to eye level to check it. And it's still just a tiny bit high. We're almost there. Whoop, get back here. Okay, so we are good to go. Um, before I go ahead and add the elements to lock this stone in place, I'm going to clean it. Um, you always want to clean your stones that you're firing in place prior to um, either finishing your setting or firing your piece um, because any dust or anything on them could lead them to clouding up. So I'm gonna grab some alcohol and I just like to dip my stones. So I've dipped my stone and it's dried off. And now I'm going to place it back into its seat. And again, I use my tweezers to do that to avoid um, any potential kind of oils from my finger transferring back to that clean stone. And now at this point, we're ready to add the little um, finishing touches on the side. This setting for me kind of came about as um, an interpretation in metal clay of bead settings. Um, I always really loved the way that they looked and how they sat. Um, but with bead settings, you're using a graver to kind of gouge out um, some material that you're then balling up over your stone. And it's a very technical process, um, but we're kind of, you know, taking our own metal clay take on it with this setting. So I'm kind of considering these my little beads, I guess, that I'm gonna be applying to the side. So I've got them there, I've got a damp brush here, and I'm gonna dampen the clay next to my stone. And I know we already cleaned the stone. Um, I mostly did that to get the back. We are going to clean it one more time before we pop it in the kiln, just to be thorough. But I've got my, whoop, I almost have my, where'd you go? I've got my finishing touch here. And the static keeps making him run away. And I'm picking him up with my tweezer. And I'm placing him just over the edge of my stone there. You can kind of have a little bit of time here to negotiate it. But it's starting to kind of tack up from the water I put there. So you got to work a little quickly. To this side as well. I'm kind of checking and looking across. Does that look like it's on the same spot? And again, it's just over the edge there. And that's just going to help keep the stone in place. It's a li little bit too large to be a super secure flush setting. So this extra material not only looks nice, but is also going to make sure your stone stays put. All right. When you're happy with the positioning, just take a teeny bit more water and I'm gonna drop it on top of my round dome finishing touch and onto the band as well. 
and um, with Easy 960, it joins very successfully with just water. So I'm going to allow this to dry, and then it's just a final cleaning of that stone one more time with alcohol, either on a Q-tip or a disposable applicator, and we're ready for the kiln. So I've given my piece a kind of final look over to check the surface, and I've cleaned my stone so I'm ready to fire. These silicone ring mandrels are only for forming on, and um, are not to be fired in your kiln. So at this point I'm removing the mandrel, and since there's this nice flat face, I'm just going to place that directly against my hard um, kiln shelf here, and it's just going to fire like that. Since I'm working with EZ960, I'm going to fire this at 1675 for two hours. So while that piece is in the kiln, I just wanted to take a moment to kind of talk about all the different ways that you can really make this project your own. Um, here I did two more rings where I used uh, shaped finishing touches molds um, for the accents instead. This one has, um, I believe it is an elm leaf on either side, and I have an olivine stone there. And then this one I worked with a blue nano gem with a seashell. And again, I just really like the low profile. They're super comfortable to wear, and I'm really happy with how this project turned out. With all the finishing touches available and all the different stone colors that you can work with as well, you could make this project 20 times and each one would turn out a little bit different. I can't wait to see your finished rings. Thanks for watching.